physical self be purified thus let me assert that i am the light itself pure free from all desires i am the purity itself om antaratma me shuddhyantam jyotiraham viraja vipapma bhuya sagam swaha me my mental self be purified let me feel I am free from all impurities. I am of the nature of light itself. Om Paramatma me shuddhyantam jyotiraham viraja vipapma bhuya sagam swaha me my innermost being be purified free from all desires let me feel i am of the nature of the supreme illumination i am that i this first person singular has always a very special place in our general awareness we feel other things in the world other people in the world they are hmm, they you they they have a different status of existence i am the most important thing their existence is certified by me this i certifies uh, that you are this i is uh, the primary existence that can never be doubted everything else uh, can be doubted everything else uh, has uh you know coming and going one thing that never goes is this idea of i it is ever present and there is no ambiguity about it in my childhood i would remember uh, now that uh, how natural it would feel that it is uh, uh coming from outside somewhere and wanting to go uh, inside the home uh, i would knock the door or the press the door bell and somebody from inside would ask who is that and then i would say i am it is i now the person inside would say well what is this i who is this i then it would strike oh just by saying i it would doesn't convey uh, exactly uh, who the person is so i need to specify so another name would be added to it and i saw this happening with many especially younger children Uh, who would not uh, uh, think that this i is uh, kind of insufficient saying i would actually suffice that i am everybody should know this i am 
And that's, this is a central inner feeling, I am, that does not need any further specifications. I am, that's it. So, therefore, uh, in Bible you find uh, in Exodus uh, this uh, incident when Moses saw God speaking through the burning bush and uh, gave him message. But then, so, uh, what should I tell? Who are you? Who are you that is speaking? And Moses uh, heard again that I am that I am. There is no further name. Just go and tell your people I am that I am. A very important statement in actually in Hebrew that word uh, is uh, Ehye, Asher Ehye. Uh, it is Ehye, Asher Ehye. It uh, conveys that Ehye is uh, not a present tense as such, but it is a continuous present tense, uh, a first person singular imperfect. Uh, showing an ongoing process. It is not uh, finished anywhere. So this is ongoing something. There is no break uh, that anywhere there. I am and so it continues. There is no f further need to uh, specify anything there. Uh, when you specify then things get limited. Uh, you add adjectives, uh, any other name or any other, well, the one uh, wearing a black shirt. Now you add something uh, that limits it. But this amnes, the existence itself, which does not have any demarcations, any barriers, uh, any particularizations, that is, uh, the, the divine cannot be described in any other way. It appears that uh, we can, like many other things, we can specify that this is God. Like you describe a particular person, you describe a particular thing, and we, uh, in our search for definiteness, mm, one would say, I don't like ambiguities. Uh, tell me clearly, I am a man of science, uh, and so I want everything clear, definite. Uh, and so give me what is God and what is not God. Now there is no such possibility of describing the divine in such terms. It is this and it is not this. There is uh, particularizations inserted into this and therefore it automatically limits it. That which is unlimited, is there a way of describing it? The only way that is told is I am. That I am. Uh, sometimes it gets interpreted also, especially uh, some modern interpreters of this sentence, I am that I am, and they say that it is, one should say, I am that I am. That means the goal, uh, the ideal, the Brahman, I am that. Uh, and that I am, that I ever have been. Nothing needs to be changed there. Uh, I have always ever been that. So, and this indicates the all-pervading existence. And 
that has pervaded every single form when Lord is describing in Bhagavad Gita uh, in the 10th chapter that, uh, well, Arjuna, the disciple, is asking this question that in what ways can I think of you, in what different ways can I meditate upon you? And while describing uh, many secondary expressions for meditation, uh, the first thing the Lord says there, I am the self of all. Uh, in everything you see limited, uh, like a, a heap uh, of sand, or a person, or a building, uh, or stars, moon, sun, and all that. In each of these, I am in them as their very self. Aham Atma Guda Kesha Sarva Bhuta Shaya I am uh, in each and every thing that you can think of as their very self. But then does that, do you get limited by being in every such thing? So to clarify that this next uh, line of this verse says, I am the beginning, the middle and the end of everything. Aham adish cha madhyam cha bhuta naam anta evacha. In I pervade everything, nothing can uh, limit me. I am therefore in everything as their very self, that amness. And this, our amness has become uh, the central search in uh, all this uh, human uh, yearning for the ultimate wisdom, ultimate knowledge. We keep on searching for uh, where this I am. Can I f locate, can I find, can I specify uh, where this I am? And while we keep on looking for it, uh, we see that it eludes any kind of grasp. Not that it cannot be grasped, because uh, we see many sages, they are firm uh, in their experience. But when it comes to description, then uh, there is no description that can fit it. We are studying these days here every Friday uh, this Keno Upanishad. And in Keno Upanishad, there was this question that was asked that uh, who is actually inside me that is uh, uh, guiding all the sense organs, motor organs, the mind, the body. It seems that there is somebody who is uh, uh, forcing this machine to work. Who is the one that is making this machine work? The question appears quite legitimate uh, because uh, this body is just like a machine. The mind is also just like a machine. But then no machine uh, works just by itself. The machine is for somebody else. Like one buys a car, the car itself doesn't buy itself. It is for somebody's use. And the car gets bought and then that person drives it, uses it. So naturally this question would be there that who is uh, working through this? There is somebody who is seeing, using the eye as instrument. Somebody is there who is using this ear as that instrument. And that must be a single entity, you know, because otherwise there would be one somebody who is using the eye and another somebody that is using the ear, somebody third person using the hands. And that will be uh, such a chaos, you can imagine, that it is, uh, we see uh, that it all gets very well synchronized in us. 
seeing, hearing, thinking, all these different faculties, uh, they have to be placed on uh, one substratum combined together. So it must be some one user uh, who is using this machine. And so the question was asked, who is that? In uh, Vedanta, uh, this is uh, uh, therefore a central search that who am I? And the answer uh, in Kena Upanishad and in other such places uh, uh, in Upanishads and Bhagavad Gita is very uh, counterintuitive. Uh, we would think that the answer would be given. Uh, this great, uh, uh, very wise sage will point out, you know, inside there is a ghost sitting uh, that you cannot see, but that is actually uh, getting all this work done. But the sages, they tell it is pervading in and through all these. Uh, so, they do not give any specification as to who is that it is, it is. There is no you further telling uh, that it is like this, it is white or it is black or it is brown, you know, uh, specification. It is light or heavy, you cannot tell. It just is. There is nothing, no way of going uh, anywhere else except this all-pervasive uh, entityness of it. It is. That's it. And the uh, greatest manifestation of it is this uh, all-pervading idea in every human being. And we are speaking about human beings because we can uh, see it, uh, we can certify it, whether actually uh, a cat also has the same feeling, I am or not, and we don't know, should be there, but uh, we do not have that knowledge. Uh, but about human beings, we would say, yes, everybody has this I am. Uh, there is, that is in fact the constant factor. And so, uh, the Vedanta is many times summed up in this story. Uh, the story is told in many uh, secondary books of Vedanta uh, that some friends, they decided to go uh, cross a river uh, for a picnic on the other shore of the river. And then they took a boat and went there and after coming down, and getting down from the boat, they said, well, we started, then let us see, we all are here or not. And they started counting, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. My goodness, uh, somebody is missing. One of, we started, ten, sure, and then uh, now we are only nine. Who is missing? Uh, another said, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hey. One is surely missing. And they were very worried. Now, did that fellow got drowned in the river or we left him on the other shore, other bank? Uh, and so, looking at their worried faces, concerned faces, an onlooker, uh, he decided to help them out. Said, what's the problem? Why uh, you are uh, at such... Uh, in such distress, oh, what to tell you, you know, uh, we started then and now uh, after crossing the river, we are just nine, what happened to one? And he said, is it so? Come on, I'll, I'll, please count again in front of me. And that man started counting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then onlooker took his finger and put it on his the counter's chest, the one who was counting. Hey, this is the missing one. Do you see? This is the missing one. This is as such a funny story, but it uh, really indicates the nature of our problem in the world. That we 
count every thing but miss uh, this central figure and therefore we are always worried uh, we are always scared also and there is no other way of uh, bringing this uh, satisfaction fulfillment and uh, freedom from fear except by knowing and uh, this missing entity and so therefore the focus the in vedanta is to discover this missing entity that is in everybody that says you know, i am in fact many texts offer this as the proof of uh, the existence of god and what is the proof that uh, god exists tell me give me some evidence i don't just want to believe here say i want hard facts evidence and uh, where is god and it is told the one uh, who is uh, looking for proof that is god if you deny god you deny your existence do you accept do you believe your existence the one who says i am mm, that god is there as i am uh, the uh, the fact that does not uh, get removed even when we are dreaming uh, this whole universe becomes different we meet different people in dream different kinds of animals different land different scenery what does not go away i am and that fact remains even in the dream uh, that i am and when we wake up or when we are in deep sleep that we are not even dreaming even then we are very certain that i am the same it was my dream i was seeing dream then not that somebody else was seeing dream when i wake up i i was seeing dream and there uh, that describing in the waking state and seeing in the dream state i am pretty sure i was seeing dream and uh, not some jerry was seeing dream and uh, then yogatma and the things that it is his dream no i was seeing as my dream i am same uh, unchanging even in the dream i am that i am now give specification to it then all things become uh, really uh, uh, very uh, muddy i mean uh, uh, vague uh, it all gets then disturbed either you have the vagueness of no specifications or confusion of specifications so uh, the the best way is to therefore stick to this idea i am that i am actually kabbalists they interpret this uh, this great saying i am that i am uh, as a lord's message to all people that i am in you i whenever there is this i am that is i am i am in you tell yourself i am that i am uh, that actually search for who you really are will bring out uh, the essence of knowledge in each of us in brahmadaranya upanishad uh, the very beautiful idea comes somewhat humorously but bringing out this uh, uh, important nature of i that uh, it is said there that uh, we all have this commonality uh, it is uh, necessary for communication to have a common link through which the communication can occur uh, and communication is uh, whether right communication or wrong communication uh, irrespective of that the very fact that the communication is happening means there is uh, a concrete connection there uh, a connection has to be there for communication 
For example, uh, you are seeing me, you are seeing each other, I am seeing you. Seeing is a connection. There has to be, you see, uh, something uh, there and something here which get connected and then seeing can happen. The light there and the uh, vision here, there is a connection. If there is a connection is broken, then seeing doesn't happen. So, uh, it is this connectivity throughout. I am seeing uh, a distant star. Uh, there is a connection. That is why I am able to see. Seeing is a sort of communication, an exchange of message. When I hear something, again the same thing. It is a communication. When I speak to somebody, it is communication. Uh, that and communication always uh, therefore indicates a connection. Uh, a connection means what? Again, let us see. There is, has to be connection means uh, there is a commonality. Uh, it connects the two things together by one joint bond that is shared by the connected things. Uh, like this microphone is connected to this stand. Means in, the, in this part here, uh, they become uh, connected. They are, this part is shared by uh, both of these. So we all share something, that is why the communication can happen. And what do we share? Our true name. And we share our true name. The Upanishad says, uh, we share our name. It is common name. Uh, there, the firstborn, like God, uh, He uh, declared, same like uh, God declared to Moses, that I am. That became his name. Uh, the Upanishad says that uh, Aham Namasi, that uh, you, are, you have the name Aham, I am. Uh, that is your name. And therefore, everything that is manifestation of this also keeps on uttering the same, uh, reverberating the same one name, I am. And the Upanishad points out to the fact that if you ask uh, anybody uh, that, well, to give, introduce oneself, then that person says, I am uh, so and so. Uh, somebody would say, I am Candace. Somebody would say, I am Paul. Uh, somebody would say uh, that I am uh, Anupam. Uh, and so many in that different things, you know. But the other names would be different. But the first real name, everybody will tell the same. Don't you see this? Isn't it a very intriguing, curious fact that while introducing, we first uh, automatically say our true real name, I am. Am. And then the secondary changeable name is added later on. That is a changeable name. And it changes according to circumstances, according to the times, uh, and so forth. According to the work that we are doing, it gets changed. Like the same person uh, I am will say, uh, to the patient, I am doctor. For the patient, and that person would be, I am remains the same, but I am doctor. For uh, his wife, uh, that would be, I am husband. For his kids, I am father. Uh, for his friends, I am friend. All these things, these are the secondarily added, uh, attached names, which get changed. Uh, and even if I said, think that this my name Charles is not very good, 
uh, it is that too many charts and then so let me change it so one can go file an f and an affidavit and change that name but this real name can never be changed i am instead of first saying that i am charles uh, he may go and say uh, that i am dick oh, because charles can be changed to dick but i am that i am there is no possibility of any alteration there it uh, transcends the limits of time and space uh, you will see in all languages it is the, the idea remains the same uh, whether you are uh, a sanskrit speaking or a bengali or a hindi speaking english speaking spanish speaking everywhere you will see i am is a constant thing that never leaves us and therefore this is a, a being a constant factor in our experience at uh, which we do not uh, actually clearly experience and therefore uh, the sages tell know thyself know uh, this i am Uh, go deep into the secret of it and then uh, that knowledge will uh, flash in you that endeavor uh, one has to take up to know uh, myself when i know that then everything else becomes known uh, if you do not know this unchanging self then even if you know everything else it is not a knowledge at all in another upanishad mundak upanishad uh, a question the disciple comes with another very beautiful question a very deep question that knowing which everything gets known we all feel this idea that i must know everything Uh, i must know uh, how an automobile works i also need to know how the medicines work i also need to know uh, how the economy and such things work i also am interested in music and literature i need to know how all these things can be done uh, i want to know everything this is a hidden desire in everybody i want to know everything nobody likes to live a life of ignorance in any respect so uh, this uh, person comes uh, to the teacher that uh, tell me knowing which everything becomes known uh, this person must have seen actually that our search for knowing everything can never be fulfilled uh, by reading many books going to many universities uh, taking the all sorts of uh, degrees Uh, it keeps on you can add to your uh, that list of degrees uh, instead of one masters you may have two masters you can have one phd two phd three phd uh, i knew a person uh, uh, he had a guinness book of world record of having uh, so many university degrees he had not left a single this thing at uh, the any field of knowledge uh, that is known untouched so he knew all this but what happens to this knowledge it uh, goes on changing and in every branch of knowledge again even if you know a lot a lot still much more still remains to be learned as shri ramakrishna used to say that as our knowledge increases so also ignorance increases and you know, this is a somewhat enigmatic statement but the the point here is that the when you know something then uh, your uh, horizon also correspondingly uh, becomes much larger and you say oh i don't know so many things so uh, our 
uh, horizon of ignorance also increases correspondingly by uh, trying to know. So knowledge, increase in knowledge also means therefore increase in ignorance in that sense. But uh, this person therefore thought there must be something, some one thing. If I know that one thing then everything will become known. And uh, when he asked the question to the teacher after discussing uh, the very idea of the true knowledge, the teacher replies, therefore you know the self. And knowing everything else is not going to uh, benefit you so far as uh, the uh, ultimate satisfaction or uh, the happiness or peace uh, that you will not get by knowing all other things. So uh, the Sanskrit statement is tameva janatha atma tameva ekam janatha atmanam you know uh, that self alone you you ask me about knowing which by, by knowing which everything becomes known it is this self uh, know thyself everything else mm, is shifting changing what is considered true today uh, gets falsified by uh, the uh, research coming later on uh, so therefore that is that really a knowledge it is not really a knowledge knowledge of the unchanging reality I am that I am that really uh, pertains to the true knowledge and therefore Lord said uh, see I am that I am uh, that does not change by in time. Uh, one is a young uh, little child, grows bigger, uh, then uh, you know, grows older. Uh, all these stages go on from child to youth to old age. But yet I remain the same. There is the physical conditions get changed. The dimensions get changed and the one who was weighing, uh, say uh, one friend of mine uh, the called other day that he got uh, a new grandchild weighing seven pounds. Now after ten years I said, oh you, seven pounds is your weight, is it? No, 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 that was seven pounds then, <laughs> now it will remain seven pounds. It is a changing thing. And this is, and yet that person we know is the same person. The one who was weighing seven pounds, then weighs seventy pounds and much more uh, it is. So it is like that. Uh, in spite of these changes, this fact sticks all the time that I am, I am. It is, uh, I am so and so. This so and so keeps on changing according to circumstances. But I am uh, survives all changes and therefore that is uh, past, present, future, here, there, neither the uh, variations of time nor the variations of space uh, touch uh, this core identity I am that I am. So uh, when we want to look for continuity uh, oneness because continuity and oneness uh, are the uh, substratum of love of knowledge of existence and so we keep on looking for this. They, what remains uh, unaffected in all the other things that keep on shifting and changing and getting affected. And our moods, for example. Uh, you may say about somebody, well, he is a happy man. Mm. Uh, one gentleman was telling me that, uh, he said that, uh, we are happily married, uh, means I am married and she is happy. 
So it is. <laughs> he put a line there that we are happily married means I am married and she is happy. So it is. Uh, they they these moods keep on shifting. Something you know if uh, I hit a big lottery, ha, the mood is different. Mm, then if I run into a big loss, the mood is different. If uh, uh, my uh, if Red Sox wins here, you know people's mood changes immediately or loses it uh, again gets depressed. You know, one of uh, our two friends here, uh, they uh, would come and work here and I could tell looking at their faces uh, whether Red Sox won or lost. <laughs> they, 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 because it is a ch that moves. It is not constant. But I am is constant factor. Uh, I came yesterday, I came today, and uh, yesterday my face was beaming with joy. Uh, today it is... Mm, uh, so, uh, the moods change. The health changes. Uh, somebody is very healthy today. Oh, Swami, I won't come today. I am having a lot of cough and fever and so forth. So, that condition changed. But I am yesterday, I am today, I will be tomorrow. There is, uh, even when the bodies change, that amnes does not get changed. And the, uh, the idea of reincarnation is, is based on this very solid ground. Uh, what? Just as if this body changes, I remain the same that we all experience that this body changes. Uh, still, I remain the same. Now, uh, for example, the body, a young body, uh, old body, I remain the same. Healthy body, unhealthy body, I remain the same. Uh, my body, uh, earlier I could see very nicely as the age advances, now that I can't see very well. Uh, so, uh, it is still, I am the same. Uh, I would say earlier I could hear everything very well. Now, uh, I can't hear things very well. Earlier I could uh, run uh, five miles, now uh, I can't do that, but I remain the same. So, if we come to the conclusion of this, what do we see? That I am not body at all. And therefore, even when the body dies, I still remain intact. Just as the changes in the body uh, did not uh, affect me, uh, changing of the whole, that continuity of one body also is not going to affect me. In the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, this beautiful verse comes therefore to explain this idea that uh, uh, just as there is uh, the ch uh, childhood, uh, youth and old age, uh, they follow. Uh, we do not uh, c consider it matter of grief. So also, the changing of the body, uh, the garment that we are wearing, just newly bought garment, and uh, then got used, then started getting torn, and you then discard it, take new one. And we don't grieve in that case. Uh, yeah, in fact, we celebrate, I got a new shirt. So, this is getting a new body. So, he is telling Arjuna, not a matter of grief actually. Why are you grieving for that? So, the continuity of the self is uh, beyond all divisions of time. And therefore, uh, it is not at all uh, uh, that past, present, future does not affect it. Similarly, here and there does not affect it. Here comes the great conclusion of Vedanta. The I here and I there, they are not different. Just as the time does not affect it, the space also cannot affect it. 
Uh, it is this body each are different just as the waves in the ocean are different are the oceans the many therefore and it is the same ocean uh, in this wave as well as that wave so the i which has no specifications therefore has to be one and the same in all bodies that is our continuity that is our oneness that is what the song that we were singing to when we began uh, today's class that we are one in the spirit uh, that self that i am that is the oneness which uh, binds all of us together uh, there is this very inspiring uh, poem uh, it was written by swami vivekananda as a letter to a uh, mary hale a uh, mary hale uh, at that time they were all living in chicago swami vivekananda was guest at their home for uh, quite a few months in fact he gave people the, the his address as uh, that 541 dearborn avenue Uh, Chicago. That was uh, his uh, uh, kind of permanent address while he was moving all around. So uh, there, that was the Hale House, and Mary Hale uh, was one of the, the, that daughter. Uh, the, the, there were two sisters, two cousins, and the parents of Mary Hale. They were uh, all staying in one house there. So. Mary Hale and Vivekananda they had very interesting correspondence uh, and in one letter he writes to her i am quoting excerpts from this the poem is rather long uh, these uh, some uh, lines i am quoting from there all nature where one angry frown to crush you out still no my soul you are divine march on and on nor right not left but to the goal before the sun the moon the earth before the stars or comets free before even time has its birth i was i am and i shall be so uh, this is the essence you will see in all different uh, religious uh, doctrines i am that i am that has to be uh, the central uh, search it does not depend on on whether we are uh, we call ourselves hindus or christians or jewish or muslims uh, it is this is the central thing i am that i am and uh, let us uh, go deep into our awareness feel try to feel that the same i is in everyone and then serve that very i in others uh, that is again uh, what jesus wonderful uh, quote he was quoting there from actually the old testament that serve thy neighbor as thyself and because self uh, thyself is in everyone same self in everyone so uh, by serving uh, that uh, experience of that common self becomes more and more pronounced so that becomes then a wonderful spiritual practice uh, it is uh, as we undertake these things we will see uh, the same uh echo coming from everybody uh, that i am speaking through all different bodies mm, just as now you are hearing no i am speaking in this microphone then this speaker and this speaker and this speaker uh, i am speaking through all of them is it not uh, there is not that three four people are giving lectures Uh, i am giving lecture and it is being uh, uh, in different speakers the same lecture is being heard so we are all like these loudspeakers the same i is speaking 
in and through all different bodies when and you know, we get the glimpse of this the life becomes different uh, it uh, then gets full uh, with perfection satisfaction uh, eternal peace and bliss thank you friends